Hey everybody, Norm over here, and I got something really special here for you guys. Check this out. What did James Taylor, Jackson Brown, Bonnie Raitt, Carol King, Hall and Oates, Diana Ross, Toto, America, Cher, Glenn Campbell, Ray Charles, David Cassidy, Joe Cocker, Leonard Cohen, Crosby, Stills and Nash, Donovan, Celine Dion, Vince Gill, Merle Haggard, Don Henley, Glenn Campbell, Peter Frampton, Waylon Jennings, Chris Stapleton, Julian Lennon, Lyle Lovett, Ricky Martin, Olivia Newton-John, Rod Stewart, and Barbara Streisand, and so many others have in common. You really want to know? This guy trying to break in over here. Don't you lock the door. Keep, keep him out. Is this Starbucks? This is Starbucks, yes. Oh, thank you. Oh, okay. My old buddy Lee Sklar. No. This no. guy <laughs> is possibly, for my money, the most recorded bass player. If there's a Guinness World Book of Records, it would have to be you, Paul McCartney, and James Jamerson. But I, my money's on you. Well. I'm just happy crazy. to be a working musician. You See know, that? That's what it's all about. You know. You never say no when people ask. Never you. say no. Never say no because you never know what's going to happen around the corner. Every every day is an adventure. And there you go. And here we are in your unbelievably fabulous, incredible shop. This is the most incredible. Uh, listen, I'm not going to give you any more money. So I mean, you know. No, I. I this is what you gave me last time. Oh, I know that again. Yeah, I was just going to hold it over my face. Yeah, it was a, it was a mask and a, <laughs> and a blowtorch or something. <laughs> you just don't say blow. So, but yeah, not that. So, well, not anymore. Anyhow. <laughs> so anyhow, this guy's played with so many great players and he's got a new book out. Yeah. And by the way, him and his gang of people that you recorded with once called the section yeah but now they're called the immediate family yeah you guys have a new documentary out i hear it's fantastic it's really amazing and uh he's also got a new book out and this book was inspired by alfred hitchcock the birds <laughs> right well, kind of sorry i was hoping it was a paying <laughs> Just customer Nick. but you know it's, hey, he's, he's not paying it's a pickpocket that's right you better um, be careful yeah the um you want to sit down? Yeah, let's, yeah, let's, let's sit take down. a look over here. here and we can... A couple of old codgers here. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Let's... We need chairs. <laughs> so, pull up a oh, stool like next it. to another old guy here. You got it. And I'm going to grab the book. <laughs> and this is the book. It's Everybody Loves Me. The thing is, is, if you park on a hill, this is a really good thing for chalking the tires, too, so your car doesn't roll away. It's, it's well, you know, you got to have double use for everything. Absolutely. This is, you know, for those who can't read. <laughs> but actually, there's not a lot of reading yeah. in here. This is more pictures. Why don't you yeah. kind of show us what's going on with this? Then? Well, th there's an explanation in the book as to how this came about, but a, a brief synopsis of it is... When I was on, with Phil Collins in 2004 doing our first final farewell tour, um, I had a bass tech on the tour named Steve Chinner Winstead. Oh, I know him. You know Chinner? Yeah, of course. Well, I'll show you this. With Tom Petty. Oh, yes, you. yes. Well, that is the first finger picture, and that's Chinner right there. And there's an explanation, but he was hired as my bass tech, and I'd never had a bass tech. I always did my own gear and stuff. Yeah. So he came in hungry and ready to work. And he said, what do you need? And I went, nothing. I, I don't know. You Maybe know, a Diet Coke or something. Yeah. Like I, yeah. I, so we, and it was like a year long tour. I mean, this was really long. And, uh, and so uh, he ended up being kind of a general gopher for everybody on there. Uh, it was a shame because he was so good at what he's he did, great. but I really, really didn't good need guy much. Too. Yeah, he's great. But there was talk uh, that Phil was going to retire at the end of the tour. And I thought, I may never see any of these guys again because the crew's from all over the world. We had like 100 crew people on this tour. It was a huge tour. So um, I thought, I'm going to take a picture of everybody and just make a little folder in my computer where yeah. I can, you know, years from now when I, still ha when I don't have a memory, I'll wonder what that's all about. Yeah. But up to that point, I can kind of We're reminisce. Yeah, I could reminisce. And... As fate would have it, the first person I go up to is Chinner. 
and he's sitting at his laptop working, and I say, Chin, or, you know, give me a smile, and he just goes. And I took a picture of him flipping me off, and I went, ooh, that's kind of cool. So at that point, I went and got Phil, Tony Smith, his manager, everybody in the band, everybody in the crew, pilots, bus drivers, truck drivers, caterers, everybody. And I put it away for, for you know, I finished it up, and it was about 150 pictures. Then I think two years later was the first time I toured with Toto. Uh -huh. And I thought, I'm going to do that again. So I got, I mean, it was not a problem getting Luke to do it. but So I got everybody on that and put that one away. And it took on a life of its own at that point. And at this point, I think I have a little over 13,000 photographs well, of people. Giving and, you the bird? Yeah. And, uh, and there's 6,000 in this book. Uh, Show us a little yeah, bit about it, because, I mean, you should get this book. This is such a cool well, book. here's my old friend here's, Jackson. Here's, there's Jackson Brown, Phil Collins in here. And it, the way we laid it out, there's just all kinds. There's Abe Jr. Abe Laborial yeah. Jr. Yeah. Um, Mick Fleetwood, Bob Babbitt. Another um, great bass yeah, player. Eddie Van Halen, Graham Nash. Uh, slash, I mean, it sh it just goes on and on and on. And I, Jack Nicholson, Lou Adler, and wow. see, th th there's a lot of pur pur purposeful things too, because these two guys sit together at Lakers games. So we right. did the two pages in Lakers colors, which is kind of a Purple little inside gold. thing. Yeah, um, it's just. By the way, I, I hate being left out. So. Oh no no volume <laughs> two volume two like we've got the cover now. Oh there you go. Here's Lyle Lovett right after his colonoscopy. There's Billy Bob Thornton. You know, and, and, and but you know, it's it's like Al Schmidt's in here. You know, I mean, they're Great just like you know. yeah. One of the the sad parts for me uh, is when I look through it now. There's a number of people who are no longer with us. So there's it's a, yes, there's I a know. melancholy. I love this one on Phil's tour. This was our pilot and co-pilot. And we pulled the plane over, and then they they got out the little the little kick windows and gave each flipped each other off. So it's you know Graham Nash and Allie Willis, um, twins. We've got a little of everything in here. It's kind so, of the who's who right yeah. here. Yeah, and why and and who's why? Yeah. So so it's 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 fun. Um, Brett McKenzie is half of Flight of the Concords out of New Zealand. He's we, been in the store. He's yeah, actually he's great. Somewhere. He's really a great. talented. Yeah. I've done the Muppet movies with him and did his new album Fantastic. and stuff. So it's uh, I'll What's show you. Yeah. Uh, no, no, you, you don't. No, we, I don't, yeah, I don't, don't play anymore. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you one of the most important pictures in here for me. Let me get this to the end here. I think it's this last page here. Oh, well. Right here. This was my junior high and high school music teacher, and he's the one who turned me on to bass, Mr. Ted Lynn. And I hooked up with him many years after junior high and high school. And uh, this was shortly before he passed away. And uh, it was so great because I really owe everything in my life to this guy. I mean, he, I was a pianist when I went into junior high. And... Uh, they needed bass players. They had tons of piano players, and he pulled out an old K upright, and I showed me how to hold it, and I plucked one note and felt that vibration run through me, and that I just went, huh? sold. I am, I am there, and he gave me some basic lessons to get started. And Very that, cool. So, and you must need to read too, right? Because I mean, you do so much, yeah. Barbara Streisand, things like that. I'm yeah. sure they don't have. Well, there's an element of spontaneity, but there's also, you know, it depends on the project, though. But I did tons of movies and television. I did all of my post-TV shows. Um, and the fortunate thing for me was that I started as a classical pianist at, for, when I was five years old. So when my break to, to get into the studio world happened, I, I had the, um, the chops and the, and the skills needed for it rather than just being in a band, which I'm not going to denigrate that, but the fact that I could read suddenly opened up other avenues of it. And, and I was really good friends with the Wrecking Crew people. Of course. Yeah, I knew a lot of those guys. Who Tommy Tedesco. I've yeah. got Tommy Tedesco stories. Oh, Sorry, I'll just say best. one quickie. Yes, please. He comes into my store one day and he says, uh, Norm, all my stuff's in cartage. 
and I need like an inexpensive classical. Do you have anything that just plays, but that's kind of cheap? Yeah. And I said, well, you know, I just got this guitar. It's no name, but it actually plays good and sounds good. It's a hundred bucks to you, Tommy. He <laughs> goes, good. I'll play it a gin to 200. You either <laughs> give me $200 or it's yours for free. Yeah. And I beat him. And which yes. was, yes. Uh, that's you know, amazing. I mean, Tommy was such a character, oh, but he best. was like the most recorded guitar player yeah. at one point yeah. of all time. You know, I'm not sure I don't think anybody's superseded that. Yeah. I mean, point. he was unbelievable. Yeah. You know? So, uh, but the guys, you know, the section, I mean, you guys were the insurance guys, you know, like if you have a session and it, say you have an orchestra sitting there, you can't have people coming in trying to figure out how to get a sound in the studio, yeah. how to get their parts down. You need these insurance guys who are going to get the stuff Nail done. Nail it quick. And, yeah, because yeah. time is money, you're paying a lot of people sitting around yeah. while some guy's trying to figure it out. And that's what these guys did. And so when you knew you got Lee Sklar, you knew you were going to get the part and it was going to go down and you were going to get what you were looking yeah. for. Yeah, we were very, very fortunate because we were originally James Taylor's first band. And um, the, the thing that worked out really great was that there were two things in my career that, that were monumental. One was meeting James because he became the face of an entire new movement in music. Right. Um, and the fact that he was produced by Peter Asher, who when we did James's albums, he was the first producer to insist that musicians got album credit on it where you could right. read their names on it so many of those guys oh, the were crew, unnamed yeah. yeah and the you know the, the motown you know yeah. section also those guys um earl van dyke's band those yeah. guys didn't get notoriety until later on when people said who was that player? yeah james jamerson one of my favorites also. oh absolutely Incredible. absolutely you know and, and babbitt and, and um, carol k was carol k one. david hood i mean yep. all these people are just incredible so um so it was, uh, it was a, really one of those things that as James's fame hit, because all of a sudden he was on the cover of Time magazine and all this, they were signing artists like Jackson Brown and all these different singer-songwriters. Well, the, the, the producers of those would look at James's record as the benchmark and they'd see our names on it. So all of a sudden we were getting calls. And when I started working with James, I had only been in a studio one time before that, cutting some demos with a band I was in. So I went from, knowing nothing about studio to being doing three four sessions it out quickly oh man it was a, it was a hanging by your bootstraps kind of moment but um I, somebody just broke in i think oh that happens here all the oh time. god yeah. yeah well if you're going to break into a place at least make it something that's worth breaking into and this certainly is here um it's been an amazing run and then out of the section over all these years we've ended up forming a band called the immediate family Right. And uh, Steve Postel, and Steve Postel, Russ Waddy. Kunkel, Waddy Wachtel, Danny Korchmar, and myself. Danny, yep. And it all really revolved around Cooch, Danny Korchmar, right. because Cooch got offered a record deal with a uh, label called Vivid Records in Japan, and when it, and they wanted him to do a solo album, and then he thought he would check and see if any of us were around, and it turns out we were all here. So we went in, and in three days we cut, and it was all songs that he had written for other people like you know with Don Henley and James Taylor and Jackson and all these people cool. and when we did it we ended up going to Japan to do a um, a promotional tour for this album and we all went, this is great what are we why are we and so Cooch yeah. came up with the name immediate family he said well you guys are my immediate family so let's just call it that great and uh and then uh, Danny Tedesco who did the Wrecking Crew movie contacted us about doing a movie about us and here we very, are again. Very cool. And so that movie is called, it's The Immediate, the immediate Family. The Immediate Family. And it's, uh, I haven't seen it yet, but I've been told by a few people that have seen it, because, uh, is it? It's not available yet? yet. It's only doing film festivals right now. Right. So those are the only people but that have I've seen it. But I've heard just fantastic things yeah. about it, you know. So, um, I mean, just such a great history. Yeah. And, and one other thing, you're about the most recognizable bass player on the face of the earth. Uh, who who came first, you or ZZ Top, Billy Gibbons? And well, actually, the, the beard. beard came first. It was born. They were pulling the beard out, and I was attached to oh, it at, that at that point. But uh, um, I've got a great picture of, of Billy and I together. Very it's cool. Really, and everybody kept going. You know, when Dusty died, they said, 
he's going to call you. And I said, no, I don't think he's going to. It's, I'm glad they kept it in-house the way they did. It worked out perfect. Well, he's a good guy. And, yeah. You know, and I'm sure he wants to, you know, keep Dusty's memory sacred. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But you would be a logical I would have choice. done it in a second. I would have done it because I've always been such a huge fan of those guys. And when I've seen them live, it's still They're great. the yeah. best live show. But... Um, you know, I, mean, I get all that crap every time. I, I, it, the, one of the funny moments was I was in Nashville doing an, an album with the uh, Oak Ridge Boys, and William Golden had oh, been yeah. fired at that point. He was the bass so was there, getting, right? Was no, no, good? that's Richard Sturban, but he was the one with the long beard. Right, right. So they, they got rid of him. There was issues or whatever. He's been back for a number of years. But I was in the studio with him, and Loretta Lynn shows up at the session, and she walks in and sees me, and she goes, I can't believe they got rid of one and they found another. <laughs> <laughs> it was it, one of those moments. I went, Why wasn't somebody recording this one? But, uh, yeah, you, I get that all the time. You, you're wandering around people yelling, he's easy, or Oak Ridge Boys. And the only thing that ever pissed me off is when they go, hey, Duck Dynasty. <laughs> ah. yeah. Well, you know, I mean, it, being recognized is a good yeah, thing. You know, yeah, it I mean, it's better than is. going through life and nobody knows who Just you are. Just wallpaper. You know, um, the first time that I met Lee, I had gotten a friend of mine a record deal with Warner Brothers. Um, Hearth from Earth, Hearth Martinez. And Hearth was one of the most talented people I know, great jazz guitar player. And he would wake up every morning, discipline, have a cup of coffee, and write from 9 in the morning to 5 at night. Yeah. And um, I was selling some guitars to Bob Dylan and Robbie Robertson, and I told them about Hearth. And I said, this guy's got like stacks of tunes. He never repeats himself, just goes on to the next one. And they said, yeah, what are the tunes like? I said, well, before I show you any guitars, yeah, I'm going to play a couple of the tunes. Meanwhile, they uh, recorded a record, Robbie produced it, you played on it, yeah. a lot of the guys from the immediate the family days. Yeah. were there in the section. And um, it's a fabulous record. And unfortunately, Hearth didn't want to travel to promote the record, and he, his career went way up and way down. Like a Roman quickly. candle. Yep, yeah. and that happens, you were saying, when somebody says do something. Do it. Do it. I mean, if you're going to commit to doing something like this, if an opportunity comes along, and especially for him, I mean, if you have Robbie Robertson and Bob Dylan willing to go out there for you, I mean, that's a pretty good endorsement. You, you do it. You, you know. And what was the guy's name? The the uh, arranger was it Bob Simon or it was Simon, I think his oh, name was Simon. He produ He yeah. arranged for the band and yeah. Stuff I'm, like I'm that. blanking on his name. And that but happens. He, every he was day. yeah. Well, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Floyd the Barber, you know, oh, yeah. this is an old thing that you guys probably won't know about the Andy Griffith show. Floyd the Barber, you go, it's gone. It's just gone. It's what happens to us old guys, you know. I would love it. Every once in a while I see somebody wearing one of the t-shirts that's a big pink t-shirt with Floyd's picture on it. It says yeah. Pink Floyd. On yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's, they're so great. <laughs> Well, I am honored to have you in the store, and thanks for coming by. I'm and, thrilled to be uh, here. And, you know, honestly, my money is on Lee is to play it on more hit records than anybody. Even James Jameson, even Paul McCartney, I don't think, played on as many hit records as you have. Well, you know, it, it, to me... I've always looked at, at, at music, I mean, this is like when I see the award shows and stuff, I've never s seen it as a contest. Right. You know, I'm, I'm just so grateful to, to be, you know, working and, and at this point I'm, you know, 53 solid years of working right now and I'm already busy up until the beginning of next year. You were out with Lyle Lovett. Recently. Yeah, we just finished uh, an acoustic tour and then we're going to be out for the summer with the large band and then we're, the immediate family is going to be on a cruise in March, I think the Rock Legends cruise, and I think I'll be out with Lyle in February also doing a cruise. Um, I just, I always figure a moving target's harder to hit. There you so go. So you just keep on keeping on. You know, one other funny note, a few years ago, uh, Lee got an award and my buddy uh, uh, Dave Amato and uh, uh, just so many other people, um, you know, got awards as rock gods. Oh, yeah. Do you yeah, remember that? Yeah. So they gave me this award. And I'm looking at all these names as like Robbie Krieger and uh, Phil Chen and yeah, Lee I mean, and all this stuff. Kenny Aronoff. And Kenny I mean, Aronoff. And I'm going, 
You know, I grew up in Florida. Maybe it's like a fishing award. Maybe it's rock cod. <laughs> I don't know. So I said, I don't know what I'm doing here, but I'm not giving the award back because I figure oh, by no. the time they regain consciousness, <laughs> you know, out I'm out of there. <laughs> so, but it was great seeing Lee there, and it was like old home week with my old friends. Yeah, we did and, that at the Country Club, wasn't that, it? Right? Well, in Hollywood, no, it was the Hard oh, Rock. Oh, that's right. right. It was the Hard Rock this time. Yeah, I've been to two of those. Oh, I presented out there at one. And our buddy Phil Chen, who is yeah. no longer with us, another shocking. guy who was a great guy, loved music more than anybody I yeah. know, I loved the guy, yeah. one of the great bass players yeah. too, you know, so. It's shocking um, that he's gone. So it's my honor to have Lee Sklar in the store. Show him the book one more time here. Everybody loves me and <laughs> and uh, just as a leaving note, Get the book, guys. <laughs> All right, buddy. That's great. That's great. That's great.